give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, everybody. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas asked him when the Lord said, We are going. I'm going to a place and the way you know. And the way you know. And he said, Lord, are we going to go where you're going? And we don't know where you're going. Are we going to know the way? And he says, I am the way. The truth and the life. Huh? He is the way to that place. He is the way to that place of favor. Recovery. Everlasting life. Sharing in God's eternal kingdom. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. And he wants us to know him and to know the power of his resurrection. Amen. He's the resurrection and the life. And he says no one comes to the Father but by him. Praise God. And it's good to know him. Uh, many may boast about knowing other people in life. And they take pride to say, I know this person or I know this famous or popular figure. But, but it is of no avail when death shows up. <laughs> when death shows up, the only one person you need to know. I can truly deliver you and make it worthwhile is the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He has conquered death, hell, and the grave. And he will teach you also to do the same if you trust and obey. Hallelujah. So we are here declaring the gospel of the kingdom of God. It is important to declare this gospel as many are becoming distracted and are losing sight of the purpose why they are here. Hello, somebody. I want to send out a message to the preachers this morning. I want to what? Send out a message to the preachers, the preachers of this gospel to keep preaching the gospel. To what? Keep preaching the gospel. And I want to bring something of that to you that Paul said to Timothy about preaching and declaring the word. And he says, he must preach the word in season and out of season. Preach the word what? In season and out of season. It's in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. Paul says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and teaching. Exhort with all what? Long-suffering and teaching. Hallelujah. And I tell you, the generation that we are living amongst is a generation that wants to have things their own way. And this was the generation the Lord was dealing with, was here. He, he said, what do I, should I lighten this generation unto? Huh? What shall I lighten them unto? He says, they are like children sitting in the marketplace. Saying, we have piped and you have not danced. We have mourned and you have not mourned. We have uh, danced and you have not danced towards you. In other words, they are expecting us to do what they want us to do. While they are not receiving the message that God has given us for them to do what God has called them to do. And I want to encourage the preachers on this. Because in Matthew 11, 
verse 16 to 18, the Lord said, But to what shall I lighten this generation? In other words, what shall I compare this generation to? And he says, It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their companions. And what are they saying? We played the flute for you. Huh? And you did not dance. We mourned to you. And you did not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking. This John is speaking about is John the Baptist, a preacher of righteousness and a forerunner to Christ that came baptizing men with water to reveal Christ to Israel. And he says, John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. Come on now. Give me some more there. John came neither eating nor drinking and they said he have a demon. And the Son of Man came eating and drinking. So John the Baptist came not eating and drinking. They say he is a demon. He wasn't eating much what they were eating. He was just eating honey and wild locusts and honey. So he had a special diet that he was eating. They in turn said he have a demon because he didn't eat much of what they ate and ate like all they ate. Now one come eating like what they eat. It's the son of man, which is Christ, came eating and drinking. And what did they say about him? Look, a glutton mean he's craving. <laughs> and a wine bibler. And a friend of Tuscaletas and sinners. This was not a compliment. This was a statement of criticism against him for what he was doing. And the Lord says, this is what this generation is like. What wisdom, he says, is justified by her children. Come on. Hallelujah. And so he, he's saying that you, we will know then who is wise by how they live. Huh? It will be proven who has wisdom and who has not hello I, I, i'm gonna share that with the preachers today that oftentimes some of them get caught up in the crowd of criticism and start to become men pleasers and lose sight of the work that they are given to do in christ and i tell you there are a lot of distractions in this world. A lot of what? Distractions in this world. And the devil is the one who is orchestrating this level of distraction to get them away from their true purpose and the mandate that God has placed on their life to accomplish the mission that they have been given to accomplish here in the earth. And I'm encouraging the preachers as Paul did to say, preach the word. What did he say? Preach the word. And what word is this? The gospel of the kingdom. Now, one, at one point, John come not eating and drinking what they are eating and drinking. And they complain against that preacher as a demon. He has a demon. Then Jesus come eating and drinking and they says, well, he's gluttonous. They still find faults no matter what. Yet still, they are the ones that are still in their sins. John is not in his sin. Jesus is not in any sin and there's no sin in him. And yet still, they would not listen to John nor would they listen to Jesus. But then they had complaints. They had what? They had complaints against them. Criticism against them. As they are not 
playing. They are not dancing to our tune. They are not mourning with us. Huh? When we mourn, they don't mourn. <laughs> when we play a tune, they don't dance to our tune. Huh? And John, Jesus was saying, that should not be something that preachers must take to heart and said, let us see now how we can please them. Because Paul spoke about that pleasing people thing. Huh? Paul speak about that in Galatians 1. And he's speaking about the word that he's declaring. That there are often persons who will debate and resist his message. And will have all manner of evil to speak against Paul. Because of the message that he carries. And the life that he lives. And Paul said it in Galatians 1 verse 10. When he's defending the gospel that he preached, he says, For do I now persuade men? Do I know what? Persuade men or God? Come on now. Hello, somebody. Do I know what? Persuade men or God? In other words, am I seeking to impress men? To win men's favor? Are God's favor. Come on. He says, Or do I seek to please men? There it is. Do I seek to please men? Huh? For if I still please men. In other words, there was a time he was seeking to please men. And that's why he says, For if I still please men. In other words, he's not living that way anymore. He said, if I still please men, I would not be a, a bond servant of Christ. In other words, he would not be a faithful servant of Christ if he put give pleasing men a priority in his call and his vocation as a messenger. And as an apostle of Christ. Come on now. So he said. Pleasing men is not on my priority list. Hallelujah. Yeah, my priority list. Speaks of pleasing God. Come on somebody. We see that also in Acts. Chapter 4. When Peter and John. Were arrested. Because of this gospel. Huh? We hear about obey the law in the land. Remember when we were having services here during COVID. They said no. We should lock the church doors. And have no messages here going on. Because it will encourage the gathering. And we're not to have any meeting. They couldn't tell me that. Because they weren't the one who called me to preach this message. They were the one who anoint me for this work. Hello, somebody. And when God anoints you for our work, you better put God first. Even before God, even before government in the earth. And I want to point that out to you. Because here it is. They were taken and put in prison. Locked up. Huh? Beaten. Huh? And before they even got a chance to give their case. Come on now. And, and they now were brought out now to find out what was all this chaos and this upward upsurge in the community about. Yes, these men are troublemakers. <laughs> uh, these men, what did these men do? He says, they call them, that's Acts 4 verse 18. They call them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. Now, if they, say, if they preach in the name of God, 
it would suit them because they got God too. But they're referring to one name. Hallelujah. That they said that name is associated with someone who even the government condemned. Come on. You hear what I'm saying? The name is associated with who? One who even the rulers and men condemned. Men in government condemned him. The Jews couldn't put him on a cross. They needed the authorization from the government for him to be put on a cross. So when you say, just obey the Lord the land, at all costs because God said was obey love land is that in all cases not at all right so when we look at this he the, this John and Peter this was no John and Peter apostles of Jesus Christ not John the Baptist but John and Peter now preaching the gospel of Christ the gospel of Christ and his kingdom and they came to this temple and saw this man who was paralyzed laying at the door and was there begging arms of those who pass anyone sorry for him can give him something to help his his plight and his Christ, his Christ for to um, gain some provision to meet his needs but the thing here is that while he was there, Peter and John come up amidst those who were coming by and dropping something for him. But Peter and John said, as in chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, Peter and John said to him, silver and gold, we do not have, huh? but what we have, we give to you. Come on, then. Peter is saying this, I believe John is in agreement. And John and Peter together agree to release something powerful to this man. Hello. Because he says, what, we, what I have, I, ha I give you. And what is that he gave him? He gave him the power to rise up and walk though he was paralyzed. And that was given to him in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's what Peter says. Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. He gave him the power to rise up and walk. And that was in the name of Jesus. And he took him by the right hand. And lifted him up. Come on. And immediately his feet and ankle bone received strength. Come on. So he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them. Walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Huh? And this caused no, some crowd together and caused some attention to be brought now to Peter and to John. Huh? They knew, in verse 10, they said, they knew that it was he who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. Now, as the lame man, who was healed, held on to Peter and John. All the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called, Sol called Solomon's. Greatly amazed. It's called Solomon's porch. And so when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Huh? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power, our own godliness, we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, 
glorified his servant who? Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Huh? But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the prince of life whom God raised from the dead of which we are witnesses. Now I know the leaders and the rulers were not given that version of what happened with Jesus. He was still branded as a criminal who died amongst criminals. But Peter is here declaring him as the Christ and declaring his kingdom that God raised him up. Hello, somebody. Huh? And he says, and it's in that one's name, he says in verse 16, he says, and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him what? This perfect soundness in the presence of you all. He says, it is faith in him and in his name. Come on. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance as did also your what? Your rulers. Who was those rulers? Come on, will you just lead us? But there are also people who were in government. Rome was the one who approved and declared it. Come on now. Watch, I will show you some more. Hallelujah. Because crucifixion wasn't an execution that Jews carried. It was what Rome carried. Watch this thing. So he says, but those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ would suffer, he has thus what? Fulfilled. So what did he tell them to do? Repent therefore and be what? Converted that your sins may be blotted out. Come on, you're not going to be saved with your sins. Your sins must be removed from you. Come on. That your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me some more. And that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before whom heaven must receive until the times of what? Restoration of all things. So it says, there's a time of restoration of all things that is coming. Come on, somebody. And he said, he is in heaven until that time comes. He says, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his prophets, his holy prophets, since the world began. Come on. Hallelujah. So it says, For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will what? Raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall what? shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. That is the kingdom. You know. It's about the king and his rule of governance, which is his kingdom. Come on. And that's what Peter is preaching here. Say, so you must repent. Come on. He's not friending them upon saying, well, we understand. All of your people, me have my thing, and you have your thing, was make we live together well. He says, No, he still declared to them, You must repent. Don't just rejoice that this man who was paralyzed is walking, but you must 
Repent because he said the reason this man gets such a miracle is because this man believed in this one who you have condemned. Come on. Are you hearing this? And he's saying to them, so, so it's good for you rejoicing about that, but you need also to believe in this one. This same Jesus. Huh? And he said, yes, all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these things. You are sons of the prophet and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying to Abraham, in your seed, in your what? In your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Not just Israel. But he says, all the families of the earth. That would include, include the Gentiles. So he says, is all the families. And notice he says, in your seed. Speaking of one seed. Not many seeds. But one. And he says, this was referring to Jesus Christ. And he says, to you first, God having raised up his servant, Jesus sent him to what bless you so he said that's the one who was sent to bless you that's the seed through whom all the nations shall be blessed and he says in turning every one of you uh, turning away every one of you from your iniquity he's not saving you with your iniquity you must turn away from them. That is what repentance is. We are not here to fill up with the world in the sin. And tell them oh, we sinners like you too. We just love the Lord and we know you love the Lord too. Let's come on and work together. No, it's a lie. Keep preaching the gospel. Let them hear who will hear. Come on and let them know there is no salvation without repentance. And if they do not repent to get that salvation, they will be destroyed. Because he says, anyone who doesn't hear that prophet will be removed from amongst the people. Huh? And he says, yes, and all the prophets have spoken foretelling about what that Christ would suffer. Hello. And spoke about him that in that seed. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. So he said in verse 26. To you first God having raised up his servant Jesus. Sent him to bless you in turning away. Every one of you. From your iniquities. Yes. Hallelujah. And he says, now as they spoke to the people, the priests, captains of the people, the Sadducees, came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. Come on. No, no. The, 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 the priests and captain of the people and Sadducees were religious people. They said they were serving God too. So why would they act be against resurrection? Because the Sadducees don't believe there's no resurrection. They don't believe in our spirit. Pharisees do, but Sadducees don't. So we see even amongst the religious, there is a division. But the Lord wasn't calling us to unite religion. He's saying that you need to believe on Christ and believe the gospel. Believe on the kingdom because if you don't hear what Christ tell you, you are going to perish. Come on somebody. This is not a religious move. This is a move for your salvation and for your position and possession in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. 
It, and the kingdom of God refers to the spear over which God rules. Hello. And it says, now as they spoke to the people, the priest, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. Huh? However, many of those who heard the word believed, and a number of men came to be about what? 5,000, and it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. Huh? Hallelujah. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people. Who was he speaking to? Rulers of the people and elders of Israel. And what? Elders of Israel. If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well? Huh? He says, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you all. Come on now. And this is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become what? The chief cornerstone. He says, nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name. That sounds like his united religion. Not at all. He says, there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. In other words, this is not optional. This is mandatory. You cannot come into the salvation without this name and without this one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He says, if it's not by that name, you will not be saved. Hello, somebody. Does that sound like he's just congregating with sinners and saying we're all in the same boat. Let's just work together. Not at all. He says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with, so they know about Jesus then man. Or it means that they realized they had been with Jesus. Come on now. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. Huh? Hallelujah. They conferred amongst themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Come on, somebody. In other words, this is no secret. This is not a secret miracle. This is well known. Glory to God. This one can't keep quiet. There's no hush money to quiet this miracle. 
You remember when Jesus was raised, these elders paid the guards who were at the tomb to tell a lie that the disciples came while they slept and took away the body. So spreading a lie, but they couldn't usher out this one. This was a notable, a what? A notable miracle. And I'm encouraging the preachers that preach this gospel of the kingdom. Pray for God to give you some notable miracles to confirm the word you preach. Come on, somebody. What you must do? Pray for God to give you some notable miracles. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That they can't, that this unbelievers and scoffers cannot deny. It's so. Come on now. And it says that they said amongst themselves, a notable miracle has been done. Through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further. In other words, they can't stop it. People from knowing about the miracle. But they want to stop the message that brought the miracle. Watch that one. And I want to tell the preachers, careful of your friendship with the world. That want to highlight and allow, say, yes, you did some good there and some miracle. But they want to silence the message that brought the miracle. That's why it says friendship with the world is enmity with God. Come on. You, you can't be friendly with the world and maintain your loyalty to the Lord. Because the world has taken a stand against God. And I tell you firmly that and show you in other places in the scripture that it is so. Come on now. You ready? So he says then, but so it spreads no further among the people. Let us severely beat them. Let us severely threaten them. That now on they speak to no man in this name. So they're telling them, say, you see, if you're going to speak in this name, we're going to cut you off. Come on now. Come on now. Let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. So they called them and commanded them. They called them on what? Commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you, than to God. You judge. Come on now. Hello. This is a point where Peter and John is saying, we, when it comes to pleasing you, and when it comes to pleasing God, we're not in a bind. Our caught in a fix to find out what to answer yourself. We are clear on our position. And I want you preachers to be clear on your position. Hello, somebody. Be clear on your position of faith and the word you declare. That you're not here to get praises and get some nice compliments and awards from the world. But you're here to declare the word of power and truth. That souls be saved for the kingdom of God. Huh? And you better stick with that and don't let them seduce you into anything else. Hello. They want to put a, a what they call gag order. A gag order on you and tell you, say, well, you know, you can say God, you know, but you see, if you're saying this Jesus thing, it caused division. So just say God because a lot of people have God. You let them know there is only one way. And he is the way. The truth and the life. No one 
can come to the Father except by him. Come on. And so he says now, for we cannot, what did, what did Peter and John said? Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God. You judge. Huh? Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God. You judge. But he says, for we cannot but speak the things which we have what? Seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go finding no way of punishing them because of the people since they all what? Glorified God for what had been done. Hello, somebody. Hello. This is not about pleasing people. John wasn't doing this to please the people, to try to save their skin. They were doing this in declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. Come on. You must keep preaching and believing the gospel. And despite all the things that bring against you. Come on. Hello. Give me some more deal. Let me show you what happened in that Acts 4. Because huh. it says, For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. And being let go, they went to their own companions, reported all the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard which are the companions they went to, they went back to their own assembly, to their own church, and reporting how they were treated in this incident. So when they heard that they raised their voice to God with one accord and said what? They said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Thing says the government is God. You are God who made the heaven, the earth and the sea and all that is in them. Huh? Hallelujah. And he says, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why did this nation rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth, the what? The kings of the earth took their stand and rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, he's the Christ, he's the anointed one. Both Herod, that was the leader for the Jews, Pontius Pilate, the leader over him, by, appointed by Rome, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Huh? Were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servant that without boldness they may what? Speak your word. Huh? By stretching out your hand to what? Heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were, were assembled together, was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possesses, he possessed was his own. But they all had things in common and with great power. With what? Great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Or oh, they gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord. More signs and wonders were done to prove. Because he's saying, is the one you say it dead? 
The one you say is dead is that one name and person we're still doing it to. He's the one who's doing it to us. So how is he dead? That is revealing the witness to the resurrection of the Lord. And the great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. Hallelujah. Nor was there any among them who lacked. For all who were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. And laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed to each one each as anyone had need hello somebody and joseph who was also named barnabas by the apostle which translated son of encouragement a levite of the country of cyprus he having land sold it sold land you know, and brought the money and laid it at the apostle's feet come on somebody but, uh, and next shall we speak about say, a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold possession and tried to corrupt the whole thing. They sold possession and brought, say, they brought everything to the man of God and laid it at his feet when it was a lie. They wanted praise out of the snow to say they are doing the will of the Lord when they were not. You get it? And that, of course, condemned their soul. They are corrupting the work of the Lord. Come on. And Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? You know, they committed and vowed all for the Lord, but then kept back part because when they sold the land, they found out the land was worth a lot more than what they thought it was worth. And they think, well, the church won't know about this. So we can just carry them and give them and they will, it will suffice. It will be enough. Huh? But the Holy Spirit exposed that this was a lie. And Peter was exposing to them that they didn't just lie to him. But they lied to the Holy Spirit. And that condemned their soul. Come on now. Hello. He said to them, when it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own, in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. My God, my God. So great what? Fear came upon all those who heard these things and the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out and buried him. Come on somebody. I mean the church need to pray for his own sign man. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was about three hours later when his wife, that Sapphira came, not knowing what had happened to her husband. And no one say he already died and was already buried. Because you would believe in burying same day, no? same day dead, same day buried. And Peter answered her and said, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. And Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed? Come on, one thing for your husband. To want to tell a lie, but you agree with him? Come on. Even though he's your husband, if he chooses to sin, you don't have to agree with him to sin too. Come on now. He says, now it's about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened, and Peter answered, and, uh, answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much and she said yes for so much and peter said how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the lord look the feet of those who are buried your husband are at the door 
and they will carry you out. Oh, Jesus. Huh? Then immediately, she wasn't ill or anything. She just fell down and died. Fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead. Carried her out and buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church. And upon all who heard these things. And through the hands of the apostles what? Many signs and wonders were done. Come on. Among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Glory to God. My God, I tell you, if you understand the principle of what we declared here today, you will know there's a lot more for us to do in this country. And it don't come with agreeing and working uh, and, and, and giving our opinion and view with sin. I just say, yes, we are all in the same boat. We need to let them know, except you repent, you will also perish. Hello, somebody. With all the news we're hearing of the heinous and terrible crimes that are happening in the land, where they're saying, well, it's coming like Jamaica is becoming blood capital. And I can tell them that worse than that will happen. And it will not happen because the church not doing their duty it will happen because people are not responding to the message of christ to the gospel of christ both those in the church and those out you need to submit to god's governance and rule because whether you say you have a good nice life that you don't encounter any kind of violence any kind of robbery any, and you live peaceable and quiet and you say oh my life was so peaceful and quiet without christ you have one place going come on now you will still perish and you're still going to hell because you cannot be saved without christ come on now and he speaks about you Knowing this, and we want you to understand this thing. Those who will say, Well, you know, we know what's happening in the news, what's happening in the country, so much bloodshed and so much church. Why is this happening? The more the word is preached and people ignore the word, the worse they will wax. They will wax worse and worse. They will become more hardened. In their hearts and more wickedness will manifest to them through the sway of the wicked one the devil and they we can't ignore that and obsess some how they live good even though they don't accept christ i want you to come back to the truth preachers and declare the truth to the people let them understand there is no good life without christ there is no good sinner. There is no holy sinner. There is no righteous sinner. And you need to understand that though Christ came to die for the whole world that was in sin, he didn't die for us to remain in sin. He came to take the sins of the world away. Not for us to be saved with sin, but to be saved from sin. And that's why Peter was declaring that there must be a point of change. It has to be more than just about here and now and the life you have in this flesh. He says, remember the gospel. He's speaking about a life and a world beyond this. Come on, somebody. Hello. And this was a case where in Luke chapter 13 where Jesus was being told by some people about what was happening around you're here preaching Jesus and we know you're preaching but you need to 
stop a while and reflect on what's happening you know reflect on what's happening man look what's happening here but and they come telling jesus what's happening in it from his community he says they were present at this season some who told him about galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. He said, These come from your ear because you're called a man from Galilee. And the people come from your area. And Pilate killed them to use their blood to sprinkle on his idols. That is something gruesome. These people had families, they were sons, they were fathers. They had family, they had persons who suffered and hurt at the loss of them. So they're telling Jesus about this. Uh, you dear preaching the gospel, you need to stop and, and talk about this man. Look what happened with Pilate and these people. Jesus did not deter from preaching the gospel to deal with both Pilate and what happened with these people. What did Jesus say to them? Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners? than all other Galileans. In other words, once you are a sinner, you're going to perish. That's what Jesus was saying to them. Once you are a sinner, you are going to perish. Watch this. He says, do you think that there are worse sinners than other Galileans? Why this happened to them? That's what he was saying. He says, do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you no. But what is his advice to them? Unless you repent. Remember what Peter was preaching? Peter was preaching that they must repent and turn from their iniquities to be saved. Now these alone say, no man, just go and try and do your best. And God will still love you and take you to the kingdom. He said, no, you must turn from sin. Watch it thing. He says, suppose these Galileans were worse. These Galileans were worse sinners than other Galileans. He says, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So he said, even if you live to a good ripe age and you live a very luxurious, comfortable life, that person says, man, you're blessed and you're healthy and you have a lot of things to your favor. He says, without this gospel, you are being prepared for the fire. Come on. You are going to be stubble for the fire. Because no one is saved without the gospel. You hearing me? No one is what? Saved without the gospel. That's why Paul says, it is the power of God unto salvation. He said, it's not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. That's what brings the salvation. Come on now, somebody. And he gave another example to Jesus. He says, Jesus said, Are those 18 and whom the tower in Siloam fell? Huh? A tower was being built and fell, and 18 were killed that same day, crushed to death. They had families, they had loved ones. People were hurt through that incident. 18 lives snuffed out one point, one place. And what did the Lord say about it? Well, you know, I'm going to go up there and hang some flowers. Huh? Have some ceremony there. Give some psychological talk to those who are in mourning. Visit the families of those who are dead there. No, the Lord says, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. In other words, the life that you're living now is already set for you to perish unless you repent. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. 
And he says, so he's not excluding them and saying, well, you know, thank God you, that, you know, you know, experience that you are right. Because the tower of silence don't fall on you. At least you still have life. You're good. The Lord said, no, unless you repent, you will also perish. He's not saying the tower of silence going to fall on all of them. <laughs> but he's saying to them, your end will not be better than theirs without the gospel come on if you don't believe on the gospel you will all likewise perish come on somebody God has intended that the sin must be eradicated from his kingdom and the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein anyone practicing sin will be removed from the land come on somebody and will be judged for those actions and there's an eternal punishment awaiting them come on now hello somebody are you still here and so we, we can't just sit down and groan with them and say, Yes, I true, we grieve for the 18. I true, we feel it. We ball and we hear about the 18 dead. <laughs> he said, You need to warn them that there is worse awaiting than just death to this body. There is worse thing than death to this body. Jesus warned his disciples about that too. He says, fear not the one who can only kill the body. He used the word only. Come on now. Hello. Because he says, the body is not the end of your existence. There is more to your life than your body. Hello, somebody. That's Matthew 10, verse 28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Huh? He says, but rather fear him. Fear who? Which him is that? That's God. He says, fear him who is able to destroy both. Did he say both? Both body and soul in hell. Come on, somebody. Now, if the grave is the end of you, then the, it, it, it's, this message would be false. Because it means say once the person kills your body, you also destroy your soul. But he said, uh uh. Killing your body don't destroy your soul. You have life beyond this body. My God, my God, my God. And Jesus spoke about that in Luke chapter 16 about two men, one rich man and a poor man named Lazarus. Both died, but both were still living. In different world after their body of the death of their body the body died but they were still living but they were living quite different experience of life after that and they're in two separate place come on now Jesus spoke of that for those who would think said there's not more once you die, that's it. Huh? Jesus wants you to know, say, uh-uh, that's not it. So that's why Jesus spoke in Luke chapter 16, verse 19, speaking about a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day. They would have said, man, the man, they bless. He loaded in heaven. He's got everything. He's rich. He's all right. Everything to him, please. Come on now. 
But what did Jesus say? There was also a beggar. A certain beggar named Lazarus. Full of sores. Who was laid at his gate. So somebody sorry for Lazarus and say, Man, we can't lay at the gate so even the little garbage that they throw out there, you can savage through it and get something to eat. Something to sustain you in your condition. Laid at the rich man's gate, desiring to be what? Fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sore. Come on. Only dogs tend to him. Come on now. Huh? So it was the beggar died. Did the beggar die? That's Lazarus died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. That's his body was buried. But he was not in no grief. Hey, look where he was. He says, being in the torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off. Come on, he's in hell. And Lazarus in his bosom. And then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Ah, do, do it sound like him dead? Huh? <laughs> it sound very alive to me. Come on. And Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime, that is in your former life. So there's a present life now he's experiencing. And he ain't loving it at all. But he says, In your lifetime you receive good things. Likewise, Lazarus received evil things in his past one. He says, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. You are what? Torment. And beside all this, he says, between us and you, there is a great gulf fix. So that those who want to pass from here to you cannot. Nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father that you would send him to my father's house. So he said to Abraham, send him then to my father's house. For I have five brothers. So he still remembers his five brothers. And he's conscious of how they are living, that they will end up in the same place easy. He says, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment come on he's not talking about no grave <laughs> abraham said to him they are moses and the prophets come on moses is a prophet but when he says moses and the prophets he's talking about the writings of moses which was the law he says they have the written word and they have the prophets which is the preachers of the written word he says let them hear them Hear the word, the written word, and the preachers of the written word is the them. And he says, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Because you know the world already, they love dead. If you want to see crowd, tell them somebody dead down the road. If you want to see crowd at church, tell them you have enough funeral. They love the dead. And he said, but dead, if someone come from the dead, they will believe. Come talk to them. He says, but he said, if they do not hear Moses, as the written word, and the prophets, the preachers of the written word, neither will they be persuaded, though one rises from the dead. And it's been over 2,000 years, one rises from the dead, and they still don't believe. You got to bring them in remembrance of his message, man. Don't get weary to tell them. Be here with patience and tell them they will perish without this gospel. 
no matter how good they think they live in their life, they will perish. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. My God. So you tell them, if they don't hear the Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded or one rises from the dead. And it is still so today. Preachers keep preaching the word. Don't get caught up trying to please the crowd. Don't get caught up trying to get the appraisal of people that are not truly in investing their heart and their thoughts and, and works into the work of Christ. Come on. You know you're called to declare the word. Declare it in season and out of season. How can the word of God be out of season? Because there comes a point when he says there is not a demand for it. For Paul said there will come a time that men will not endure sound doctrine. They would rather hear everything else and sit on and talk with you the whole day and everything else happening in the world. What about the word of God? That's what separates us from the world. The word. The word separates us from the world the world doesn't want to hear the word of god come on the world just want to talk about the world and want to live as well as they can with the world but the lord is declaring he's gonna make all things new he's gonna remove from his kingdom all things that offend and practice lawlessness and you got to ensure you're not among them that causing others to sin are practicing sin but you must live as elect and chosen of god come on somebody holy come on because when paul even tell to be um, timothy to preach the word in season and of Susan, he says, Timothy must be ready. Must be what? Ready. That ready is not just to speak the word, but to live the word that any time the Lord put in his appearance, they will not be found wanting. Come on now. Must be ready. Hallelujah. And if you're ready, huh? You will surely. Be ready for his appearing. That's why he said to Timothy, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead. Judge who? The living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. At his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, he says. Be ready in season and out of season. Whether people expect you of or not, be ready. Whether they want to hear it or not, be ready. Whether they want to see it in you or not, be ready. Convince, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and teaching. Come on, somebody. Because this world is set against God. But he said, There shall be a new heaven and a new earth. And the old world, this old world is passing away with all the lust of it. For this old world is under the sway of the wicked one. Come on now. But God has called us to newness of life. Let us live the life and be consistent in the word. Don't let the enemy distract you away from what God called you to do. At your end up in all kind of activities worldly affairs and forget what you're called to do preach the gospel preach the word of the kingdom let them know unless they are born again they will perish everyone that is not born again will perish only those who are born again have a chance in the kingdom praise God and Jesus told Nicodemus that. 
And he's still speaking that to you now. Tell them they must be born again. Tell them the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Tell them, hallelujah, righteousness, exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Tell them their own righteousness is filthy rags. But God has revealed to us the righteousness of God that is in Christ Jesus. And we access that righteousness through faith in him. The one who justifies us and makes us right before God. Tell them if they do not turn to Christ, they will perish. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Tell them they and their whole household will perish without God no matter how good a life they live here. Without Christ, God will declare them unfit. Come on. Stick with the word. Declare it. Live it. Believe it. And keep be steadfast and immovable in it. I'm praying for you. I hope you're praying for me. And together, we will declare the king's business and declare the king's message about his dominion. He reigns forever and ever. And all the opposition will be put down. All resistance will be crushed. He and he will reign forever and ever. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and he will reign forever and ever. All power belongs to him both in heaven and in earth. And those on the earth that refuse to comply with him will be removed from his kingdom. Tell them, don't be shy about it. Don't fear the, the persecution, the retaliation, the, the, the scorn and the threats, the mockery and the abuse. Tell them, come on, I'm praying for you. And I'm here to tell them to. And I know you're praying. But be steadfast. Immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. I encourage you with this word today. And hope that you do find it as an encouragement to stay the road. Stay the course. And see God's power manifest more and more in your life in the lives of those who hear you praise god come on somebody give him the praise come on stand with me we're going to pray it's time to release you glory to god glory to god thank you jesus father we thank you for your word today your word they are spirit and they are life. This life in the flesh is fading. The glory of man is like the flowers of grass. It springs up and it withers away and is passed away. But your word is from everlasting to everlasting. Your truth endureth to all generations. I pray that those who hear will hear. And not only hear, but embrace the word. Which is able to transform, heal, and deliver them. And to make them into a new creation. One that is born and, and made in true holiness and righteousness. In the presence of Almighty God. I pray that grace will be released to them. That they will not waver in their faith. They will not waver to the left nor to the right. I'll be steadfast and immovable. And always abound in your work, O oh God. I pray that you'll raise them up to be the head. And not the tail to be above and not beneath. To not succumb to the pressures. 
that are around them in this world to dance to their tune. But that they will stand fast in the liberty where which Christ has made them free. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. That their lives will be a, a living testimony of your grace, your anointing and presence and power in them. We give you the praise and the glory and claim the victory in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise right now. Hallelujah. Father, we release healing over your children for you said in the word healing is the children's bread said it's not right to take the children's bread and give it to the little dogs but the woman said even the crumbs that fall from the master's table the dogs to eat even as Lazarus stood out they eating the crumbs that would fall from the man's table but you don't want us to stand outside eating the crumbs you want us to be a part of the family as children of God. Born of God. Not of the will of flesh. Not of the will of man. Not of blood. But born of God. I pray grace will be released to them. That they will see your power manifest now. To correct those things that the enemy have marred. And tampered with. And compromised. And, and defiled. Healing in their body. now, Healing in their mind. Healing in their spirit. Healing in their souls. In the name of Jesus. You said it's our bread. And we receive it by faith. We lay claim of it. For you said if anyone believe. It will be as rivers of living water. Springing up in their side oh God. Or to the belly shall flow rivers. Of living water. Springing up into eternal life. In the name of Jesus. Let grace and favor surround us like a shield. Hallelujah. And let your healing grace be administered to your people. To recover from every hurt. Every disease. Every dysfunction. Every disorder. In the name of Jesus. For you are the God of order. You are the God. Our great physician and heal and deliverer. Our redeemer. Lord and King, our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. The author and the finisher of our faith. We give you the praise and the glory and claim the victory now in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise one more time. Raise up a praise to the Lord, to the King of Kings. Give him the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, thank you. It's time to release you. Give you a chance to sow and then release you as I speak to those who are watching online. Those who are watching online, thank you for taking the time out to watch and to be here with us and to hear the message that the Lord is declaring. I believe is to encourage the preachers, but also to encourage those who are standing with the preachers to stick with the word, stick with the message, stick with the mission that God has given you. Don't go jump into the tune that the world is piping out there. The world want to tell you how to live as Christians. The world want to tell you how to live as ministers and, and priests of God. But you must know who you are and whose you are. And don't be caught up in their concerns and their priorities that you miss on the priority that God has given to you. To declare about his kingdom and his reign hallelujah his rule and his reign over this whole world and that everything that is out of order will be removed and they'll become spoils i need to remind them that every day we are one day closer to that coming into reality and anyone that is found in that day in that such a position his position or her position is irreversible and so we are encouraging persons to get on board, hallelujah, with the message and run with the word and allow God to transform you inside out, hallelujah. He'll give you a new spirit, he'll give you a new heart, hallelujah, place his spirit in you, my God, he'll give you the mind of Christ, he the mind be renewed to be transformed in the very image of Christ, praise God, and he'll of course give you a new body 
for that environment that he will put you in that is glorious hallelujah that this body cannot withstand and so he has much more for you if you want to know more about this gospel you can check out our book we have a book out there called the gospel of the kingdom you can look for it in amazon.com look go on amazon.com and type in richard v fig and the book will come up hallelujah you can uh, order the book online you can also order it through kindle electronic copy or you can also order through us praise god we have other means that will be posted there for you to see also on our website you can go on our website and look for uh, increasing faith intl.org and you'll see of course or you can sow to this ministry or order the book online is also there hallelujah so we believe that as you read in the word it's called the gospel of the kingdom the gospel that jesus preached it will of course give you greater information and knowledge and what god has called you to do and what god is preparing for you in christ jesus and you will know that you are not coming to some uh, some wishful thinking and ideal of a thought just to feel good but it's, it's uh, it bears the power of the reality of god's presence and power in your life to bring you in the fullness of god's purpose for you in this world and in the world to come praise god so we pray for you and we pray that you will not just be a hearer of the word but a doer because it's the doer that is truly blessed so if you want to see more of the streams of the service just send a friend's request to richard fagan on facebook and we'll be plugging you into the live stream every time we go live we send five live streams of services per week hallelujah so there's a lot to build you in content and in awareness of the presence and the work of god and the great riches we have in the saints in christ jesus and so i encourage you to keep on digging in the word the gospel of the kingdom is for you and for your children and your children's children as much as we'll hear let them hear hallelujah and so you've been even sharing the word with someone or with a loved one and find it hard to to share it with them because of your lack of knowledge or because they much pretty much might not listen to you saying it you can also order that book and and, and give it to them as a gift and, and encourage them to read it and see what it is saying to them and I've, I've heard testimonies of person just going into it like that and the holy spirit come upon them to bring them into an awareness and and consciousness of the presence of god and draw them into the truth hallelujah so you can always order your copy and get it it's really pulling scriptures out of the word of god and the gospel that jesus preached which is the gospel of the kingdom and many hear it that's what, what will really bring salvation trusting in the power of god not just to forgive their sins but to give them power over sin and to experience the life of god in christ which is holy and righteous and pure that will make them fit for the kingdom of god and to have true fellowship with god and his son jesus christ and so we encourage you to push on and to see that word manifest in you in jesus name you can also see the recordings on youtube channel hallelujah and you can so to the ministry through the website and of course, any other questions, you can call me, Richard Fagan, at 876-839-9390 or 876-2427, Praise God. So the information is on the screen. Looking forward to hear from you. Until next time, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Praise God. You blessed today. Praise God. Good to share the word with you. Lift those hands to the Lord. Father, we thank you for every person that you have ministered to today. It's your word. Your word is not just word because it's not word of men. It is the word of God. And you watch over your word to bring it to pass. Your word is pregnant with the virtue and power of you and presence of your God. You this the embodiedness of the God that dwells in your word. And you release of yourself through your word to us that eternal life. And as we embrace it, let your power, your glory be revealed in us, O oh God. Your fullness be revealed in us to extinguish, to expel, and to overthrow all the works of darkness. And bring us in the full fellowship, hallelujah, and anointing of your presence and grace in our lives. We give you the praise and the glory and claim the victory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. 
And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you real good. Have a great day in Jesus' name. Amen.